What Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday here at St. Augustine Church. As is customary, our parishioners and friends have given us names of people that they would like us to pray for, and we want to invite you to join us in praying for the following. For the deceased, we pray for Noel Talon, Vicente Bañez, Loy Bañez, William Vaquilar, Rosario Resuelo, Jesus Bantay, Nestor Villarosa, Nelly Ejercito, Juana de la Cruz, Shirley Santa Maria, Catalina and Oscar Atienza, Antonino Gilbuena Jr., Daryl Sholem, Eli Sanchez, Zainal Sociarjo, Rose Marie Morales, Felix Berto Martinez, Danny Roson, Rafael Galapin, Lily Havilana, Perla Lagaspi, Esperanza Perrazzo, Romeo Jacinto, Feliciano Dimla, and Fernando Asia Sr., and all the souls in purgatory. We also pray for the healing of Mylene and Dandy Garza, Ronald Fontaneras, Diana Ona, Gerardo Bautista, Esther Adoremos, Leighton Fernandez, Kingsley Escanio, Josie Kalimlim, Art Nalasco, Leonisa Villoria, and Eden Vergara. And we pray for the birthdays of Giselle Salonga, June Rosal, Catalina Ilagan, Lucina Manuel, and Anthony Miranda. In thanksgiving, we pray for Bernadette Corpus, Ernest Patio, Palado de los Reyes de la Torre, Abad Villamar, Buenviane, Bosch and the Boschio family, as well as Rachel Jacinto and Colleen Diaz. And we pray for the special intentions of Nina de los Reyes, Janrian Bautista, Tessie and Arthur Jusai, the St. Vincent de Paul Society members, Oscar Garcia, Tonette Miranda, and Lito Dimla. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Vivian Ramos, and I would like to welcome everyone to our liturgy. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, tells us that he calls his own sheep by name, and those sheep respond by following him. Unlike the early disciples, we do not have the benefit of hearing the Lord Jesus call us by name, or do we? Through the centuries, countless men, women, and children have responded to the call of the Lord and dedicated their lives to ministering to God's people. How often have we heard the phrase, he or she has the calling? We need to look no further than our own parish to find the ways that the call of the Lord is manifested. The Lord Jesus is constantly calling out to us through the celebration of the sacramental life, through the proclamation of the living word, and through the example of those who have put on Christ in baptism. Today, the Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, speaks to each one of us, the sheep of his flock. Let us listen for the call to follow him as his disciples. Today also is Ozanam Sunday, named in honor of Frederick Ozanamam, a French Catholic scholar and social activist who founded St. Vincent de Paul Society. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul is an international organization of the Catholic volunteers dedicated to serving the poor and marginalized 
and we are very proud to say that we have a very active St. Vincent de Paul conference for many years here in our parish. If we could ask everyone to ensure that their phones are silenced and so that we now could begin the Mass um, shortly. Thank you. Table of Plenty, music number 311. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends in the Lord, it is the fourth Sunday of Easter, also called Good Shepherd Sunday, and uh, the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Coincidentally, it's also my 18th year anniversary as bishop. 
We thank the Lord for the gift of uh, uh, shepherds, for our universal church, and also our local churches, and for all shepherds, not only those who are ordained, but also um, those in their families, parents, and servant leaders in parishes and uh, different entities. We pause for a few moments, call to mind our sins, and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, Good Shepherd, you call us to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, True Shepherd, you heal us and strengthen us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Loving Shepherd, you show us the way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to, do, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, for you have gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. good morning. A blessed day for all of us. Uh, we are still in the Easter season, and it's Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, every time we celebrate the 
Good Shepherd Sunday, given all the cycles of the liturgical calendar, usually the Gospel of uh, John, different parts of it are proclaimed. And it's interesting for the cycle A, aside from the image of the Good Shepherd and the call for the sheep to listen to the voice of the shepherd, there's a particular added image that is surfaced. Let's go back to the gospel and Jesus himself declared, I am the gate. I am the gate or the door of the sheepfold. You know, in ancient times, what actually happened was that when the shepherd would lead his flock to the place where they would rest, it is a fence place. They would like enter a small hole exactly the size of the sheep. And the sheep would sort of uh, walk, crawl inside like a pen, like a sheep's pen. And then the last one who would enter would be the shepherd. And since it is exactly the size of the sheep, the shepherd would have to crouch, find his way inside, and then just stay there and even sit down or lie down to cover that hole. So he would be like the sheep. That's why when the Lord was saying, I am the gate of the sheep, literally, the shepherd becomes the gate, the door. And it's important because what happens here is that there are thieves and robbers. And he would be there to be a sentry, to protect all the sheep. And there were times they would say that thieves and robbers would really be aggressive, take all the sheep, and they would find shepherds killed because of his role of protecting all the sheep. Pope Francis would tell us, bishops, you have to smell like sheep. And that was literal during that time. Because when the sheep would gather inside that pen and walk around, and the shepherd was there, they would have to smell the shepherd to make sure he is one of them. Now we understand why Pope Francis was saying, we have to smell like sheep. You are not like a thief or a robber, you are one of us. And the vision is to be one flock, one shepherd. It is World Day prayer of, uh, for vocations, and it is really a challenge nowadays to promote vocations to the priesthood and religious life. The scarcity of vocations is real, re, very real. Very few would tread the path to become ordained shepherds or consecrated shepherds. And this day was designated for that. In the Holy Father's message for this particular day, he entitled it uh, Vocation, Grace, and Mission. And he even gave a testimony about his own vocation, filled with grace, as he was called, unworthy as he was, and then called to mission, not only as a priest, then a bishop, and then the, the pope, the vicar of Christ for the universal church. You really have to pray for all of us. I'm happy that we have... Uh, priests and uh, permanent deacons here with us. But you know, in different parts 
not only here in the U.S., but in different parts of the globe. Priests and religious comprise only like 1% of, you know, uh, even the population of a particular uh, diocese. This makes me thank the Lord for the gift of the priesthood. I was ordained a priest March 24, 1990, and I'm 33 years a priest. And then I was called to become a bishop April 30, 2005. That's why I celebrate my 18th year today. Usually, uh, most bishops don't celebrate it in a grandiose way wherever you are. You just have to celebrate Mass and be grateful to God for the gift of vocation the Lord has given you. Just a little bit of sharing. It was not my plan to become a priest. After my graduation in 1984 in Ateneo de Manila University in the Philippines, I went here to the U.S. and worked in UN New York. That was just for a year. I already felt that calling at that time when I had a series of retreats and vocation uh, search-ins. But I was so afraid to become a priest. I felt, will I survive without a wife? <laughs> that was at the back of my mind. I do not know whether Father Ray or Father uh, uh, L had that in mind. Of course, deaconess and deacon virtue are much blessed, huh? <laughs> they will receive, I think, all the sacraments. And, you know, when I was working, going to the office in the United Nations headquarters, I would find myself passing St. Agnes Church there in 3rd Avenue. It's like in the corner of uh, Lexington Avenue in Grand Central Station. And there was this poster I would uh, chance upon. It was this clerical collar, and there was this... Uh, Caption, don't think this will choke you for life. <laughs> wow. That sort of haunted me. So I really thought hard, pray hard. So I went back to the Philippines and applied in the seminary. And the rest is history. I entered uh, priestly formation, went through it, became a priest, and lo and behold, I was uh, appointed bishop. I was actually the last appointment in the Philippines of St. John Paul II when he was uh, sort of in his uh, deathbed. So I think he made a mistake. <laughs> I'm not really sure, no? Um, that was 2005, if you recall. He died also that year, you know, around April. But um, when I was appointed at the age of 42 and I accepted the call to become a bishop with fear and trembling, I told myself, Lord, why this early? You know, bishops usually are called a little bit later. That's why if you see, you see, you see a bishop, you see a bishop who is either bald or with gray hair, right? <laughs> People do not uh, uh, recognize me as a bishop. I'm, I look like a regular priest given my boyish look. <laughs> <laughs> but believe me, uh, when people ask me, how does it feel to become a bishop? I would tell them, I was robbed of my youth. How difficult it is, it's really a sacrifice to become a shepherd today. You know what I mean. No? Um, in the second reading of uh, the letter of Peter, we heard it clearly. To share in the sufferings of Christ, in the paschal mystery of Christ. In the Acts of the Apostles, in the first reading, um, Peter and the apostles were used as shepherds to heal, to proclaim the gospel. 
But amidst suffering, they preached with joy. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, please pray for vocations to the priesthood, to the religious life. Pray for your bishop. Pray for all bishops. Pray for the Holy Father. We need your prayers at this time so that we can serve the church worthily, authentically, all attuned to God's will. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The Good Shepherd does not allow the sheep to wander in harm's way, Knowing we are heard, let us pray with confidence. For the Lord's flock and for its pastors, that they always reflect the Lord's deep love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of every nation, that they live their lives with courage and find peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the farmers and ranchers who provide the world's food, that they receive a just reward for their labor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel lost and abandoned, that they enjoy the nurturing love and support of the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal, that the speakers assigned next week will be able to speak to the hearts of the faithful and get a positive response in providing for the needs of the poor and marginalized, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the members of the St. Vincent de Paul Conference in our parish to be zealous in their desire to help the underprivileged we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Mylene and Dandy Garza, Ronald Fontanaris, Diana Ona, Gerardo Bautista, Esther Adoremos, Leighton Fernandez, Kingsley Escaño, Josie Kalimlim, Art Nolasco, Leonisa Deloria, and Eden Vergara, that they find comfort in the Lord and His promise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Noel Talon, Vicente Banyas, Loy Banyas, William Vacular, Rosario Rizuela, Rosuelo, Jesus Bantay, Nestor Villarosa, Nelly Ejercito, Juana de la Cruz, Shirley Santa Maria, Catalina and Oscar Atienza, Antonino Gilbuena Jr., Daryl Sholem, Eli Sanchez, Zainal Susiarjo, Rose Marie Morales, Felixberto Martinez, Danny Roson, Rafael M. Galapin, Lily Javelana, Perla Legaspi, Esperanza Parazo, Romeo Jacinto, Feliciano Dimla, Fernando Asia Sr., and all the souls in purgatory, that they find eternal glory in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the birthdays of Giselle Salonga, June Rosal, Catalina Ilagan, 
Lucina Manuel, and Anthony Miranda. In thanksgiving, we pray for Bernadette Corpus, Ernesto Patio, Palido de los Reyes de la Torre, Abad, Villamar, Buen Viaje, Boscio, and the Boscio families. And we also pray in thanksgiving for Rachel Jacinto and Colleen Diaz. And we pray for the special intentions of Nena de los Reyes, Jan Rian Bautista, Tessie and Arthur Jusai, the St. Vincent de Paul Society members, Oscar Garcia, Tonette Miranda, and Lito Dimla, that God will bless them always, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the members of this assembly, that we and all those we love shepherd one another well, we pray to the Lord. Lord Generous God, you know each by name, hear our prayers, and let your Holy Spirit fill our hearts. We ask this in the name of your loving shepherd, Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Archbishop, and Milo, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially those whom we pray in this Mass, 
por Noel Talan, Vicente Bañez, Loy Bañez, William Baquilar, Rosario Resuelio, Jesús Bantay, Néstor Villarosa, Nelly Ejército, Juana de la Cruz, Shirley Santa María, Catalina Enosca Rachenza, Antonino Gilbuena Jr., Fernando Asia Sr., Feliciano Dimla, Romeo Jacinto, Esperanza Parrazo, Perla Legaspi, Lili Javeliana, Rafael Galapin, Dani Rosón, Felix Berto Martínez, Rose Mari Morales, Zainal Sociardo, Eli Sánchez, Darrell Scollem, and all the souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Augustine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Today's second collection is for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. May I please invite the hospitality ministers to come forward. Wrist corsages for moms on Mother's Day weekend will be available after Mass on Mother's Day weekend. It will be for sale at a minimal cost. We'd like to invite you to come for Holy Hour on May 3rd at 7 p.m., which will be led by Deacon Rich Dizon. We also invite your family and friends. And please join us for the Tagalog Mass on May 7th at 5.30 p.m., which will be presided over by Father Ray. During the whole month of May, we celebrate Flores de Mayo by having a daily novena and floral offering to the Blessed Mother at 8.30 at a.m. On May 27th, there will be a Holy Mass, Holy Rosary procession, and coronation at the 9 a.m. Mass. A light reception will follow at the church courtyard. We also invite you for coffee and donuts after this Mass in the courtyard the St. Vincent de Paul Society will be hosting this morning. We'd also like to thank the Del Moral family, Daisy and Rico, for hosting our traveling vocation cross. Could I have you stand up so we can give you a round of applause? Thank you so much, Daisy and Rico. And we'd like to invite up the Palomares family, Evelyn, Melkor, and Regina, to receive the traveling vocation cross from Deacon Virgil. Dear Palomares family, please receive this traveling vocation cross on behalf of our parish. Thank you for committing yourselves to pray during the week for vocations and to appreciate those generously sharing in our church's ministry. Let us pray. Loving Father, you made each of us to use our gifts in the body of Christ. We ask that you bless the Palomares family who will be taking home with them the vocation cross of our parish. Grant that their task to pray for vocations may be fruitful and their prayers as a family be pleasing in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. You no, know, it was nice of Bishop Milo to mention about the uh, significance of the day as we pray for World Day of Prayer for vocations. And the traveling vocation crosses are one way of fulfilling that throughout the year when a family takes home the cross and prays the prayer vocations for a whole week and, and, and invite the rest of the family to do the same. I think we need to do that, as Bishop Milo had mentioned, because this year we are zero in ordination to the priesthood in San Francisco Archdiocese, and we already have two or three deaths in our clergy. So down the road, we truly need someone to kind of assume the role of shepherds. And, and this is something that we can do together. And that is why uh, it is very important and very significant that we have Bishop Milo. As I have mentioned in my flock note message in the little catechesis, he kind of fulfilled the priesthood, um, the symbol as we know, in the seventh sacrament, there is only one sacrament that is, that is plural, and that is the sacrament of holy orders, because there are three orders, the diaconate, the priesthood, and the episcopacy, or the bishops. And so now, we have right here on the altar the three orders that are being completed with bishop. Milo celebrating his 18th anniversary at St. Augustine's. So thank you, Bishop. It's a great privilege for all of us, and I hope his message and his example and his story of vocation will inspire many, especially our young people who have had that calling and invitation. Let us ignore it, you know, unless you end up with Bishop Milo, you'll be haunted by it because that's the voice of God calling us, not just to the priesthood, but for the consecrated life, especially to becoming 
uh, sisters and nuns. So that's what we are grateful for. Later, after the Mass, we will have the opportunity, the hospitality, to greet Bishop Milo. You know, he needs our prayers too because he is not only running a big diocese in Manila, in the Philippines, the Diocese of Pasig, he is also currently the Vice President of the Conference of the Catholic Bishops Conference in the whole Philippines. And it's a big responsibility, even if he's here in the United States. I, sometimes I hear him running a meeting at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, because he has to uh, lead some of those uh, conferences. So, Bishop, thank you so much for gracing St. Augustine's for the confirmation and all the masses that you have said for us. And a little uh, special thanks for all those who have served, carry out this beautiful liturgy from our sacristans, our altar servers, uh, our Eucharistic ministers. Of course, Deacon, Deaconess and Deacon Virgil have been very, very helpful. Our readers, our uh, ushers, and Augustine TV for broadcasting our Mass. Our visiting priest is a bishop, uh, not bishop, <laughs> a priest from the Diocese of Bishop Milo in Pasig, Father L. Uh, Henet. Father L is currently serving as the uh, formerly the administrator of St. Andrew and now the parochial vicar, but he'll be returning to Bishop uh, Milo to become the judicial vicar who will be in charge of the tribunal in the Diocese of Pasig. So we also pray for him as he uh, heads off to this important ministry. And last but not least, you know, the beautiful music. You don't hear them at the 9 o'clock. They are the praise and glorify choir for the beautiful singing. Thank you so much. Maestro and Malaya, thank you. So after the Mass, please uh, let's gather and greet uh, Bishop Milo at the, uh, at the hospitality. And the St. Vincent de Paul, thank you so much for hosting the hospitality and for this year, this month's second collection. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah.
Thank you.